Thank you, Joanne. Okay. Next one's called Chief. Gus said he knew this guy who ran around most of the time with one of his emotional feet stuck in the grave. Said he went around being pissed off at the sun, the moon, the stars for intruding on his damned world. Didn't understand the need for flowers, much less the joy of music or the simple company of a friend. And Gus said he thought this guy should have been an Indian. Said his name should have been Chief Pain in the Ass. <laughs> How we doing? This coal windmills. Gus says they make him sad, those windmills in the open fields of Iowa, grown old and serious, humorless windmills, tilting at trees, gathering dust between the shingles, sad defenseless windmills, worn and creaking, windmills furthering themselves away, Pathetic bedpan windmills, battling nonsense in the wind. And now we come to the grand finale, sort of. Uh, I told you that uh, my well, not to do. It doesn't work well that way at all. Um, I told you that my cousin and Joanne and I went back to the old neighborhood. And we talked about it on the phone and it felt right. It felt like the right thing to do. Uh, we got off the phone and I started to think about where I grew up. And it's called the Badlands near Hunting Park in North Philadelphia. And I started to think, am I out of my mind? And I said, yes. So I had a few trepidations about our physical safety and going back there with a camera. We're going to shoot photographs of houses. Do these people want their houses photographed? Do they want somebody running around doing that? I didn't think so. Anyway, we decided to do it. And we did. And this is called uh, Wheelman and the Shooter. Gus and Joe went back to shoot what heart was left of the Badlands, near Hunting Park, where they grew up. Gus's foot on the gas pedal, ready to make a quick getaway. Joe armed with her Nikon, feeling almost invincible taking their lives in their hands for a few shots of the old neighborhood. With the wisdom of two idiots on a field trip with a day pass from the institution. <laughs> Gus pulled up in front of his old house. The numbers freshly painted, 3841. Joe shot it again and again but the doors and windows remained closed. Joe shot the street sign on the corner just to get things clear, but the street remained silent. They went to the park to see if they could find the ghosts of themselves as children riding the wooden horses on the carousel. Joe found out how difficult it is to shoot something that's no longer there. Instead, Joe shot the park guard station, abandoned and covered with graffiti. She shot the music pavilion near the municipal swimming pool in the middle of the man-made lake where they used to go waiting, and still she heard no music. 
at Broad and Butler, Joe shot what used to be St. Stephen's Church, school, convent, rectory, the barbed wire fence in the schoolyard where the money man used to toss his coins, and watch Joe and Gus and the other kids scrambling for nickels and dimes. Slide. But Joe didn't shoot the wrought iron sacristy stairs where Christ made his getaway so long ago. And that's the end of the formal reading. If anybody's got a poem in the book that you uh, didn't hear read and you would like to hear read, uh, let me know. Public television. Public television, okay. Okay. Gus said he was just looking for the station with the damned hockey game. When all of a sudden this guy yapping some shit about the land of the poet eyes of some guy named D.H. Lawrence and some screwy place called Quetzalcoatl looking down on Mexico the stone he chose, the turning eyes, the white breast tips of dark women. Let them suckle from those breasts the silken drops of life, renew the stars to brightness. And Christ Almighty, Gus said he couldn't figure out how all that crazy shit was happening on the tube. <laughs> Anybody got anything else? They want to hear? They want to talk about it? Anybody want to confess anything? <laughs> That's it.